Hi, this is the first of a set of videos I'm going to do on the Raspberry Pi Pico and getting started in C++. Um, so we're going to have a look at getting a Pico to flash like this one is just at the moment. Um, now this video is going to be short and to the point and really just focusing in on how does C or C++ code make that onboard LED flash. Um, and then I'll do some more uh, widening that, looking at project structure and external LEDs, etc. Um, let me know what you think of the video. Please do like it and subscribe to my channel for more videos from me and give me some feedback in the comments. I'd much appreciate it. A couple of caveats about this video. Firstly, this is a video targeted at the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, the way that the LED is connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico is actually different on the Pico W and it's different on some of the cloned RPE2040 boards out there as well. So what we're going to talk about here is the Raspberry Pi Pico board directly. I'll do videos in the future that will have wider influence and wider capability but yeah for this one it's just the Pico. Secondly, I'm not going to talk in this video about installing the tool chain. So installing all the tools you need to, to clone the libraries, to um, compile um, and run the make system or run debugging or IDEs or any of those what are classes, the tool chain. The reason for that is actually it's quite involved. Not that it's necessarily difficult, but there are lots of options depending on whether you're going to do that on a Mac, on Linux, on Windows, whether you're going to flash the code using the boot select process or you've got a Raspberry Pi uh, Pico that you're going to use as a Pico probe or you've got um, gone and bought the Raspberry Pi debug probe. Um, so there are lots of options and that makes this whole process um, take me some hours to explain. Now I have explained that and I actually have a course over on the Udemy platform that actually runs through how to do all of this. So if this is an area that you want someone to guide you through and to do some you know, assignments and tests to make sure that you've got it all right and you've got a nice setup that works uh, with all of the information about that, then please go and buy my course on the Udemy platform. I'll put a link in the description. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay helps me out with production of PCBs. They strive to be the most professional PCB manufacturer for prototyping and low volume production work in the world. Quick turns around on PCBs from their own in-house production. They can also assemble the PCBs and help with project hardware through 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal work or injection molding. PCB Way can really support any maker project. I share all of the code for all of my videos on a service called GitHub, which if you're not familiar with it, is basically a repository of lots of projects by people that they're sharing and the versions of their code. Um, it's great. It's, um, I really recommend going and using it. Um, you can see the URL here for where my, this project is located. To clone that project, which is how you actually get a copy of that project locally, um, I generally do that through a terminal session or a command session. Um, we call it terminal on Mac and Linux. We call it command line on Windows. Um, basically, it's that nice little box that appears on your screen that you type in commands directly into. The commands that you're actually going to type are identical. So you want to CD to the location where you want all your project folders for um, held. For me, that's normally a folder called SRC, source. Um, but it can be whatever you want it to be. And then to copy it, we just use the command git clone and the URL of the project. And that's it. Let me just show you that running. The build processes are slightly different between Mac or Linux and Windows. 
but actually pretty much the same. It's just getting to CDing into the folder. And actually within this RPI Pico Basics uh, project I've got online, I've got lots of sub projects. And the one we're going to talk about in this video is one Pico Flash, because it's just going to flash the Pico. So within that folder, and we can CD into that folder, we need to create a directory called build and then move into that directory with a cd command and then we can issue the two commands we need to actually bake it, make it. The first one is actually about building the compiler structure of how to actually build that and we could do that using a command called cmake and then we actually make it using the command make and that will do all the builds. If you're on Windows it's actually the command ninja uh, Ninja is just a particular version of Make, um, and that's what's installed with the Raspberry Pi Pico toolchain. So let me just show you that running, and you can see here me creating the directory, changing into that directory, issuing CMake command, and then issuing Make. I'm on a Mac, that's why I'm using Make rather than Ninja. So now we've actually got our binary built, and in fact, we've got two binaries built. We've got an ELF file and a UF2 file. Um, it's a UF2 file we use if we're going to copy it onto our Pico using what's called the boot cell process or boot select process. Whereas the ELF binary we can use if we're going to use something called OpenOCD or single world debug as a process to flash the Pico. Um, for this one, if you're just using a single board, I'd probably go boot select. Boot select I do find fiddly. Um, really for long-term use of Picos I really recommend moving to open OCD. But um, because actually holding down that boot select wire plowing power so that you can then have your Pico appear as a USB drive on your computer so that you can copy a file to it, it's a bit long-winded and painful. So you know look at the proper version. I've got a video on the um, Raspberry Pi Debug Pro, but I did to evaluate it um, when it came out first. So you can go and have a look at that on YouTube. Or my intro to Raspberry Pi Pico course actually goes into how to set this stuff up in a lot more detail. So our code's going to try and make this LED, this little tiny LED on the Pico here, flash. Um, that's it, it's very simple. Let's have a look at the code. So over in VS Code, we've got our uh, RPI Pico Basics uh, repo that we've downloaded from GitHub. And then in that, we have the one Pico Flash um, starting project. Now in there, we've already got the build file because I've already built it. And the binaries are in a directory called build and then source. And we can just see the two binaries there, the ELF binary that we use for single world debug and the UFT binary that we use for boot select. Let's have a look though at what that source is. Um, in the source folder, directly under the Pico Flash, we find um, the main program, main.c. And let's have a look at what this does and talk through this. So the first thing I guess um, is that we tend to, on every Pico program, install or include, sorry, the Pico standard library um, header file. That's because that has all of the definitions to be able to play with GPIO pads. Um, it also includes the definitions for the board um, and lots of useful types for the Pico as well. So just about every program or every C file you have, use with the Pico, you're probably going to include that. Now we're going to create a flashing effect, so we need some sort of delay um, between turning on the LED and turning it off again. And I've chosen to make that 500 milliseconds. And I'm going to create a hash define here of delay, just so I can change it in, in one go if I need to. And then all of the code to actually control it is within the main program. Just like any C program, we have a main, and that main uh, does all of the work. So our main, I guess, the other important thing to think about with mains, particularly on a microcontroller, is that there's the loop 
forever uh, going in there. Microcontrollers have no operating system. There's nothing to fall back on when the application ends. So therefore our applications never end. And we do that by having a loop. Sometimes I do that with this um, while well true piece. Sometimes I do that and, and put it more in, in the for loop. And I like to write it like that. Um, I often find writing it like that actually means more forever to me. Um, just because, yeah, I've started it with the same word. But um, both are perfectly fine, perfectly true. But yes, you will find in just about any Pico code or any microcontroller um, C program, you've got a forever loop sitting in there. Now our loop's actually going to work on flashing that LED. So let's go back up to the top and just have a look at where we're getting definitions. So I need to, well, so the LED on the Pico uh, is actually just connected as a GPIO pad. So one of the um, outputs from the Pico and from is basically just wired straight into that LED in much the same way we can do for external LEDs and I will show that probably in a later video. Um, so I'm going to define the LED pin to be the number of the GPIO pad in use and that number is this Pico default LED pin. Now that only works on the Pico because actually on the Pico W they had to reuse that GPIO pad for other purposes. And on some other um, uh, RP2040 board, they've connected other devices to that one. So it's a, you know, this is Pico only, but um, yeah, that is the Pico default LED pad. Um, and then we can initialize that, that, uh, that pin or pad um, so that we can then start controlling it. And we can then tell it that we want it to be an output. You can, a pad can actually be an input, it can be an output, um, it can actually be both at the same time, but actually we, for this and for flashing an LED, we just want it to be an output. To turn that LED on, we basically send a high status to, um, to that pin, and we use that through, that through the GPIO put command. We give it the LED pin we want to control, and we give it the value one to send it high. Um, true would also work in there, um, mainly because true actually defaults to one as well. But um, yes, this is you know just setting that value high. Now, what does that mean electronically on on to that LED? Well, it means that actually we're changing that GPIO output to be a high status to actually go to 3.3 volts. And that's enough to turn the LED on because the LED is actually getting source power from the Pico or the RP2040 processor. So that turns it on. We could then sleep for a bit because if we turned it off immediately, um, it's going to go on and off faster than the human eye is going to recognise it. So we need to sleep for a bit and we're going to uh, use this sleep microseconds function to tell the processor to just halt and do not a lot for 500 microseconds. There are other ways of doing this and I'll probably talk about those in a later video as well. Um, because you know the problem with going to sleep is that the processor can't actually do anything else and sometimes you know we want some of those processor cycles to do other things. So to turn the LED off we actually then do the same thing with that GPIO put, but this time send it the value zero, which drops it down to zero volts. Um, it's zero as in uh, a low state of for the pin, which happens to be zero volts rather than the zero meaning zero volts. Um, all the all the IP outputs from the Pico and from the RP2040 are digital, so they're either on or off. There is no analog output, so you know when you're thinking about these things, it is on and off that you're thinking about. And then we can delay again, and then we go back around the loop, and that's enough to actually create a flashing LED. Well, flashing the Pico really is where it all starts. You know, this is the program everyone begins when they write their first application for the Raspberry Pi Pico. But there's so much more beyond that. Um, 
be it robotic applications I've written, IoT services, sensors. Uh, people are even making these uh, deliver graphics to your TV. Uh, there's an amazing amount of stuff you can do on a Pico. So there's a great amount of fun we can have. But it all starts with this flashing an LED. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Um, please like the video because that helps give me feedback that actually I'm doing the right things and getting stuff out there. And please subscribe to stay in touch with my next video on the channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.